In part one, we established that I am definitely five foot 10. That's amazing, how, how did I get it that close? This whole time I could have been rounding up, I'm five foot 10. But this growth chart is still very bare bones. So we need to add some bells and whistles. We need to add an RGB LED strip, a receipt printer, and most importantly, a camera to take a picture for grandma and grandpa. This growth chart is not just for me, it's also for my kids. And they're not five foot 10 like I am. And so we need to figure out a way to differentiate who's being measured. And so that's the first challenge we need to tackle. As I thought about ways to differentiate our heights, the first thing that came to mind was just assigning a button to each person, but I would soon run out of buttons if I wanted to measure more than three people. So that's not gonna work. Why don't I just use RFID tags like these? These are the kinds that you use to get into hotel rooms. But as I look at these, I feel like these are really corporate. I don't want my kids to feel like they're going through security or something. So then I found these. These are some keychain RFID tags, which feel a lot more fun. These keychains are the same thing as these key cards. They have the RFID tag in them, but they're a lot more colorful and way more fun. But then I found these. These are RFID bracelets. They're also the same exact thing. They're colorful and my kids love wearing bracelets. So this is definitely what I'm gonna use. But there's a problem. The microcontroller that I am using currently does not have a way to read RFID tags. So instead, I found this one. This is the M5 dial, and it has the exact same microcontroller. It has a display, but it has an RFID reader built in. So I'm gonna switch to this one. And as usual, I'm gonna have to take apart everything that I've worked on so far. The good news is the code that was running on the original microcontroller transferred over to the new one with a few minor changes. I needed to make a few changes for the display and then the GPIO numbers that I used to read the encoder were obviously different on the new ones. So I made those changes and I've uploaded that to this and it seems to be working. So let me move over here and I'm gonna use the portable soldering station that I built in a video on the DigiKey YouTube channel. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. This new microcontroller needs to have this type of connector on it. So I'm gonna solder that to the rotary encoder. When I plug this in and I spin the knob on the rotary encoder, I should see the height change on the display. Now I can program the microcontroller to read these RFID bracelets and display the name of each person. With RFID, each tag has a unique ID. It's a string of numbers and letters. So I can read that ID with the RFID reader and I can map it to a name. So for example, when I scan this blue bracelet, I see my name pop up. When I scan the red bracelet, I see Patrick, the camera operator. And when I scan the orange bracelet, I see Bob the producer. This is how I'm going to differentiate between all the people using the growth chart. So this new microcontroller is ready to go. I can button it up and all I have to do really is just print out a new face plate with a circular cutout to fit the new microcontroller. The next task I'm gonna tackle are the RGB LEDs. So when this project is all done, the growth chart will be mounted here on the wall and the LED strip will be going along here in the aluminum extrusion and light up as I move the carriage up and down. At the beginning of part one, I teased this. This is the ESP32 camera module. It's a microcontroller, but also has a camera attached to it. I did some tests with this and I wasn't really excited about the quality. So what I ended up settling on was using a Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi has plenty of processing power, it has plenty of GPIO pins, and the camera modules you can get for the Raspberry Pi are top quality. You know me, I don't like to use single board computers when a microcontroller will do the job, but for this project, I spent so much time trying to get these ESP32 camera modules to do what I wanted them to do. But in this case, the Raspberry Pi, I can just plug in and I know I can get working immediately. So the next step is to connect the RGB strip up to the Raspberry Pi and see if I can get those animations working. So in the library, I actually found a few examples of rainbow animations. Uh, we're gonna test those out to see which ones I like the best. All right, pretty basic, pretty simple. I like that one. All right, animation number two is like a chase. Mm, not really a fan of that one. It's a little bit too much motion. And here's the third one, it's called Comet. It's kind of cool, but it's not really the effect we're going for. And this fourth one is called Sparkle. Again, a little bit too much. So remember that this is the animation that we'll be playing as we move the carriage up and down. So I don't want anything too complicated. And a lot of these are just a little bit overkill. So I'm gonna stick with the basic one. So that's really the next step is to vary the length of this animation based on the height that's being measured by the M5 dial. If I change just one variable, maybe it's gonna work. Wow, 
Why isn't this working? No. Honestly, this is a little bit out of my wheelhouse. I'm not used to writing code like this. I'm much more comfortable you know, designing PCBs and working with circuits and not writing Python scripts that have HTTP requests. So this is gonna be a little bit of a stretch for me. And honestly, I'm probably gonna ask ChatGPT for a little bit of help. All right, I just tried it and it's still not working, but I think I know what the last bug is. And that is the HTTP request that the M5 dial is sending to the Raspberry Pi needs to be tweaked a little bit. So let's make that change here and see if it works. Here is the moment of truth. It's working! Oh my gosh, that is amazing! I can spin this dial and it sends a message over there and updates the LED count. All of the animations working, the rainbow effect that I was hoping for is working. I have no business being able to do something this cool. I'm just some dumb electrical engineer in his basement making silly videos. This is a huge milestone for this project. I thought this was going to be an easy task, but it turned out to be way harder than I expected. So now that I have this working, the next step is to extend the length of the LED strip. To join these two LED strips together, all I need to do is to cut at any of these copper joints and then solder them back together. And I wanna make a nice clean transition from the first string to the second. So I'm gonna cut off the last LED and I'm gonna cut off the first LED and solder them back together. Before I glue down this LED strip, I wanna test the rainbow animation to make sure that it works past the solder joint that I just added. Okay, so the LEDs are lighting up. Okay, so it's now approaching that solder joint and it works. So that's great news. That means that I soldered everything correctly. So now we're ready to glue this thing on and mount it back up on the wall. Five foot ten. I still got it. When I explained this project to my daughter, her response was really cute. She asked me, well, it's going to have something that prints out a piece of paper with my height on it, right? And the gear started turning and I thought, yep, absolutely. It is going to have something that prints out a receipt for you at the end. I wasn't originally planning on having a receipt printer in this project, but her suggestion was so sincere and actually quite a good idea that I just had to implement it. So let's dive in and see if we can get this receipt printer to work. I'm looking at the three connectors here on the back. The first one, the red one, is a power connector. So it's got VCC and ground. Then next to that is USB and finally a serial UART connector. This is the first project that I've used a thermal printer on. So I'm kind of surprised to see that it has a USB connection. Now that I know I'm using a Raspberry Pi for this project, connecting it over USB is probably gonna be way easier than trying to get a UART connection to work. I'm gonna jump on my computer and see if I can find a Python library to get this printer to work. I'm crossing my fingers that this just works the first time and I don't have to go down the troubleshooting rabbit hole like I did with those LEDs. It's printing. Yes, it worked. Look at that. It says height measurement, name, Zach, height, five feet 11, because obviously I'm growing still. Uh, and it says the date, which is really awesome. This may not seem like a lot, but this is a big win for me in this project. It feels like I've run into a hurdle at every step of the way, and it's nice that every once in a while something just works like it's supposed to. So all that's left to do is to integrate the thermal printer function into my main growth chart Python script. We're on to the final component of this project, and that is the camera. Having a camera is what brings this whole project together, and it's really what personalizes this project for me. My kids' grandparents live on the other side of the country and we don't get to see them that often. So having a camera that takes pictures of my kids as they grow up and sends them to their grandparents is really gonna bring our family closer together and it's gonna close that spatial gap. When it comes to cameras for the Raspberry Pi, there are a few options. I could just use a regular USB webcam, but I wanted to try out either the Camera Module 3 
or the HQ camera. The HQ stands for high quality because it has a much higher quality sensor inside. So this would probably be the better camera for this project. But for simplicity's sake, I think I'm gonna start with the camera module three. And if I get that working, I can always change to the HQ camera. So let's connect the camera module to the Raspberry Pi, and then I'll jump on the computer to write a quick Python script to take a photo. I'm gonna run this script over SSH, and I'm hoping to capture an image of me sitting at the computer. It's gonna do a preview, and then I'll wave the camera, say cheese. Still image received, image captured. Okay, the image is captured locally on the Raspberry Pi, so I need to use WinSCP to copy it from the Pi over to my desktop so I can open it up and see it. Okay, so here's the photo. I know I look like a dork, but this proves that it works and I can move forward integrating this with my main growth chart Python script. Now that I've got all of these components working together, instead of doing the smart thing and moving forward to finish the project, I'm gonna add a little bit of scope creep because I just can't help myself. I went ahead and I ordered one of these Raspberry Pi touch displays. It occurred to me that when I scanned the RFID tag, there's no way of knowing when the photo is being taken because there's no feedback. But if I add this display into my setup, I can give myself a preview like a smartphone taking a selfie. With that in mind, I went ahead and I designed this 3D printed enclosure. My initial thought was that I wanted the display to be in a vertical orientation, more like a smartphone, but as I thought about it a little bit more, I decided that a landscape orientation would be better, and I made the thermal printer and the camera enclosures removable so that I can add them to either side. So now it's time to start assembling all of these things, and once I do that, the only thing left to do is to get my kids down here and measure their heights so we can send a picture to grandma and grandpa. I've got the Raspberry Pi all mounted up on the wall here, and the reason I have it so low is that because my kids are gonna be using this primarily, and this is the perfect height for the camera to take a picture of them. Check out how accurate this is now that I'm using the optical encoder. I'm gonna set this to four feet, eight and a half inches, and then we're gonna to measure to see how close it is. Look at that. That is like dead on. I think that's even more accurate than the doctor's office. Do you remember in part one when I said I wanted to keep track of my kid's height in a spreadsheet? Well, every time one of my kids takes a measurement, it actually gets recorded in a CSV file and I can open that up on the Raspberry Pi and see all the data. I've got my wristband here that is programmed for me, but if I tap this against the M5 dial, it's gonna measure my height and send an email to my parents and I don't want to let the cat out of the bag yet. So let's bring my kids down here and let's get my parents on a video call so that we can run through this for the first time together. Hey dad, I've got the kids here and we're gonna ready to use the growth chart for the first time. They're really excited to show you how this works. So we're gonna measure the kids and what's gonna happen is, you see how they're wearing these little wristbands here? Yeah. So yeah. they're gonna scan those on the growth chart and it's gonna measure their height and it's gonna take a picture and it's also gonna print out a receipt. And that, print, that picture is gonna be sent to you and so you can keep up to date with their growth. As they grow taller and taller, you can get a little picture of them as they grow up. Wow, that's awesome. That's a kind of a cool thing. You can see the colors light up and we're going to bring this down and it's gonna come and top, touch the top of her head. Yeah. That's how tall you are. So now you can look over here and I want you to take the wristband. Okay, now do you see that little arrow right there? Okay, and it even says her name on there. Now stand here and, and take a picture. Okay, so now it should be sending a picture to grandpa and grandma. Now you get to pull that off. There you go. And I can read that to you. On February 19th, 2025, at 1213 p.m., height was three feet, 7.35 inches. Wow, that is so cool. Yes, you know. Go to your email and see if you have an email from me. Tell you, there is. There's a picture. Of, I see it. It tells me her name, and it tells the date and the time and all those kind of things. So that's cool. Now three feet seven point three five inches tall. How did the picture turn out? 
Well, good. I think that she, she, she has something in her mouth or she's sticking her tongue out. <laughs> <laughs> Probably t sticking her tongue out. That sounds that sounds about right. So anytime that wants to come down here and measure her height, she can. She has her little wristband and she'll be able to we'll measure her and she can tap her wristband on there and it'll send a, an, an email, a picture to you with her height. We live across the country from each other and sometimes it feels a little bit far and disconnected and this is just kind of one way that we can close that gap a little bit and feel more connected as a family. Yeah, it worked really, really good. Are you ready for kid number two? Okay, you're standing there. We're gonna lower this down. Now you can step back out here. Now we're gonna tap it up here until it makes a little beep sound, okay? All right, now stand here and look at the camera. There you are. <laughs> okay, it's gonna print this out now. That's your receipt. There you go. What does that mean? It says, on February 19th, 2025, at 12.17 p.m., its height was two feet, 10.79 inches. Wow, that is so cool. So now you should be getting a second email with his picture in it. Yeah, there it is. It's in there. I see him. There's a picture. And it says, it's two feet, 10.79 inches tall. <laughs> He's celebrating. All right, should we say goodbye to Grandpa? Come give the phone a hug. Bye, guys. Love ya. See you guys. Bye-bye. Love, Love ya.